Hey everyone, so welcome to today's class. We are super excited, you guys, to reintroduce gallery glass to the world. So most of you, I bet all of you already know this, but we are super excited to have gallery glass in Michaels. It might have, I don't know this for sure, we have had gallery glass for, oh gosh, 25 years and we had it, this is a horrible way to see it, we had it and then it kind of went away and it came out of a lot of stores. And then we have remarketed it. We've relabeled it. We've rebottled it. We've got new formula, new colors, new patterns. We've got so much great stuff. And we're super excited that Michaels has all of that in their store. So for those of you that are super new to Gallery Glass, Gallery Glass is the only paint available um, we've actually never seen anything like it that makes a project look exactly like traditional stained glass. And again, this is so hard to show you guys. I know you can see that it's translucent, that you still get the beautiful light behind it. The colors stay really vibrant, um, even though um, they dry clear, they try dry translucent and you get that beautiful color. I'm gonna try to see if you guys can see it better from this angle. So that is gallery glass for anybody that is new. So today's class, um, thank you guys for joining us. Today's class is using gallery glass colors and gallery glass lead to make a really beautiful stained glass window using just an inexpensive floating frame that you can find at Michael's. So, Stephen, I want to let you guys know, just like all of our classes with Michaels, Stephen is in the studio and any questions, any comments, anything that we can help you guys with to get your project completed or product questions during our entire class, put those in the chat and we will answer those for you guys the best that we can. Okay, so the first thing I want to say before we get started is the supplies that you need and gallery glass is new to us. We normally do. Um, painting, stenciling, Mod Podge, and that is a, is a, is a craft that you can do um, in order. You know, you base coat and then you, you blow dry it, and then you top coat and then you blend and you shade or you cut out your paper. We're, we're learning so much with gallery glass because gallery glass is always a two-step um, project. Step one, is always using your liquid lead and your liquid lead makes your pattern. So let me show you guys that. So always in gallery glass, um, your first step is making your pattern and that's using liquid lead. So what we're learning here is we're, um, we wanna give you guys the best class. We want you to leave with a beautiful project, um, but it's also either you've got a pre-lead or you've got to come back and watch one section of this of this class. So the supplies that you guys will need today is an 11 by 14 um, frame. It can be an old frame that you have at home. It can be one that you bought at Michael's, but you just want an 11 by 14 piece of glass that is clean and dry. You can clean it with Windex, you can clean it with just a damp rag, but you want it clean and dry. Then we're using gallery glass. And again, liquid lead, liquid lead is how you make your pattern. Then the colors that we're using today, all available at Michael's, is we are using rosy pink, we are using sunny yellow, we're using amber, two beautiful blues, I'm gonna show them both together because they're two of my favorites, turquoise and aqua, and then a really bright, almost a royal um, or a rich royal color. And this is violet. And then two greens, because I want to teach you guys blending and shading. So lime green and Kelly green. And then maybe my favorite part of gallery glass, which is so weird because I love color, is the clear. So crystal clear is what, and I want to show you guys that are new to gallery glass. It is what I particularly use to finish off almost everything that I do with gallery glass. And let me see if I wiggle this. Oh, yep, I think so. See where you get that textured beveled glass look? If I put my hand back there, you'll be able to see it. All of that is done with crystal clear. So it's a little bit different technique. 
It's just a really fun way to get that authentic look and bring all of your patterns together. So those are the colors you need. You need the piece of glass, the letting and the clear. Don't forget, letting is always your first step, making your pattern. And clear is always your last step because it brings everything together. So then something super exciting is patterns. Patterns, patterns, patterns. Because to do a gallery glass project, you need a pattern. It's so simple for beginners, for kids, for any level of crafter, because to create your pattern, you're simply tracing. So we have at Plaid, we have hundreds of downloadable patterns that are all free. So for today's class, I am gonna use a few different patterns that we put these in the supplies. So wherever you guys are in your project, whether you're just following along, whether you're gonna lead with me today, whether you've already leaded, um, I just wanna let you guys know that we have tons of gallery glass downloadable patterns, but the three that we are using today are these. And I always say in all of the classes that I'm teaching, if you wanna just do a big butterfly or even two big butterflies and leave out the flowers, make this project your own. Um, but I'm gonna do what we did to get, to get this project completed. So you wanna have all three of these downloaded. And for those of you that are following with us today, the downloadable patterns have a number to them. So, and then they have a, which I don't even have, they have a second page, which is a color chart. You are welcome to follow that color chart if you want your butterfly to be a little bit different color, but I am only using these for patterns. So you only need the page that is patterns. We're gonna just have fun and use the colors that I did on this, on this finished project. All right, so one other thing I wanna tell you guys about just because it's so exciting and Michaels is also very excited, excited about it because it's such a great resource for you guys when you're using all of the gallery glass product that you got at Michaels. So also on Plaid's website is a guide to using gallery glass. This is free. This is something that you can reference, you can download, you can print. But if anybody has any you know, extra questions that we didn't get to, or you really just wanna become an expert at gallery glass, this guide, you guys, has absolutely everything. It has instructions, it has tips, it has a practice pattern, which look how cute this practice pattern, I just passed it. A practice pattern that you can use just to learn all the tips and techniques, how to blend color. So I just wanted to let you guys know, those of you that are new to gallery class, Plaid has hundreds of downloadable patterns and a great guide for all the information that you guys would need. Okay, lots of that, and I'm sorry about that. So you'll need your colors, your glass, your lead, your pattern, always some paper towels. And then I am gonna use two different tools today to spread my color. You don't need paint brushes, you don't need anything like that. You can either have a nut pick, um, you want that really nice metal tip, or toothpicks work absolutely perfect. And I'm just gonna have several toothpicks laying around so I can just switch out for different colors. But something to blend, shade, and smooth your paint while it's wet. So whether it be toothpicks, a nut pick, and paper towels. So you guys, that is all we need for today's class. So Stephen, I bet we already have some questions, do we? I don't see any questions so far. Let me keep reading. I love that. Um, we have people tuning in saying where they're watching from, saying hi. Yay. Um, uh, somebody said that they wish they sold the gallery glass toolkit at Michael's. You know what, Michael's, I think you should sell the gallery glass toolkit. <laughs> the toolkit is fabulous. This is the toolkit. So just to let you guys know, with four other fabulous tools, um, toothpicks work great but the toolkit is a fabulous um, thing to have. We also have, uh, we do have a question here that I'm just reading. Okay. To um, I keep finding clogging during application. Uh, do you have any suggestions? So you know what? We did a little video that we actually released maybe a week ago. So what people are asking is once they've used it one time or their second time or their third time, maybe they're getting a little, um, 
a little clog in the tip of their bottle. So we're actually recommending two things. The greatest thing about gallery glass is the new bottle, the tip, make sure you guys can see that. It's super fine, which allows you to get color into all of these little detailed areas. But what happens in all craft paints, whether it be acrylic um, or gallery glass, the paint dries just a little bit. So we've got some people that are cleaning it out with a pin. We've got some people that are actually putting a sewing pin, inserting it into the tip and leaving that in there when they're not using their paint. But another great tip and something that we like to do here at the studio, because we're always using gallery glass, is I love to cut the bottle. If you guys can see, Stephen, this might be hard for them to see. What do you think? Think they can see it if I hold it all the way all up? All the way up, and then if you can, point to where you're about to talk about. Okay, so you guys that are new to gallery glass, see in the very, very tip of your bottle, there's that little line that kind of represents where the bottle gets the thinnest. What I love to do before I even start, the first time I use my gallery glass, is I like to cut that bottle at that tip. And what that does is it opens up the hole just a little bit, but it eliminates um, that really thin channel from getting clogged. So you won't have that problem. So that's a tip, the, the sewing um, pin, in the bottle after each use is a great tip. Um, cleaning it out with soap and water. We've got some people here in the studio that are that neat and clean as crafters. I have to say I am not, um, but while it's wet, it's easy to run these underwater and get that clog out. Because what it's gonna do is it's just drawing just a little bit in there and you wanna get that out or prevent it by cutting just the tip of your bottle off. All right. So if no one else has any questions, I want to first, and this is where it's a little tricky for us, so we apologize. We want to teach, we want to teach both the person that did the letting prior to coming to class and also the person that didn't get to their letting prior to class. So I'm going to do a little bit of both in our hour. Okay, so my clean dry glass, I'm simply placing my pattern underneath my glass. I'm just, I removed the frame, the black frame, I will put on after I complete my project. So I just remove that and I'm just working with the glass. So I'm gonna just kind of wiggle and move my butterfly until he's in the position that I want. And then always using the lead. The liquid lead is what you use to create your pattern. And the same thing that I did, the tip that I had about cutting off the tip of the paint. I love to do the same thing with the lead. There's a fine line. Let's see again if you guys can see that. See that really fine line? It's maybe an eighth of an inch from the top. I like to just snip the bottle right there. I just shot Steven with, with yeah, the tip. Almost took my head off. <laughs> um, I like that it creates a little bit thicker lead line still gives you great control, but you're just able to lead a beautiful, a beautiful project. Okay, so there's one super important, um, your letting will be perfect all the time tip that will make letting ideal. What you do not wanna do with the gallery glass liquid lead is touch down on your surface and drag. If you touch down, and drag, and it looks straight, it looks fine, it looks perfect, but it's not at all, I'm never gonna get it, get to where I can show you guys this, it's not at all dimensional. And you want your letting to be dimensional so that you have a place to fill all of your paint. So the tip that I have is do not, Put your gallery glass liquid lead bottle. Do not touch it down on your glass project and just drag. Because even though your line will look great and it will work good and your pattern will be on there, it's too thin and it's not perfect to represent a lead line. If you guys can see on this, I'm not sure if you guys can. I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of make the sound to represent. 
you guys can tell how dimensional this is. It, oh, think I could ever, nope, you can't see. Well, maybe you can, but it is dimensional. The reason it is dimensional and it stands up above the surface is because you're gonna flood that with color. So never use the liquid letting touching your surface. To do liquid letting, what you wanna do is start by dropping a little bit of your line onto the glass, and then you wanna hover maybe a fourth of an inch above the glass and let that lead fall onto your pattern. I hope you guys can see that I'm not at all touching the tip of the bottle to the glass. I'm hovering maybe a little bit more than a fourth of an inch above the pattern and I'm letting it fall. This is not gonna be, I don't recommend this when I'm about, no, I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna try to hold the glass up, but there's no way I can do it. I'm gonna try to hold my hand at a weird angle. So you start by letting it fall onto the glass, but then you lift your bottle and make sure that tip is nowhere, nowhere near the surface of the glass. And you're just letting that liquid lead fall onto your project making sure that all of your different areas, so you're hovering and letting the lead fall onto your pattern, but then do make sure it touches down and connects on the previous line. You don't want any breaks where the lead does not touch because then you won't be able to fill it with color. You want each area to be closed in completely with the lead. But see how when you see the difference, really thin and really thick. When you hover over the glass and let that liquid lead fall on to your project, you'll have a thick, dimensional, perfect lead line. Any questions about leading, Stephen? No questions about letting. We had some uh, people asking for the patterns and all of all three of the patterns that you are using have been linked in the chat. Awesome. So if you scroll to find those. Here's a question. When letting the outline, you find the pressure releasing the lead is too soft. Would you keep, would you go back or keep going? So wait, let's see if I understand the question. So when letting the outline, if you find that the pressure coming out of the bottle is like making the lines too soft, I guess is how, what they're what they're asking. Would you go back, like, and go over them, or would you? Keep oh, them? oh. So the great thing about letting is you can, like, you see, I just got a little a little spot where it it shot out. You can use Q-tips, and you can go in and clean up that letting while it's wet. Or letting is removable once it is dry. That's the easiest fastest way if you've got the time to clean up your letting because once it's dry you guys let me see if I can show you on this once your letting is dry you can simply start peeling the edge and then look you can peel it off completely so all of the gallery glass projects are permanent until you don't want them to be and then they're removable. So I know that didn't answer the question, but I did want to let you guys know that. So if you let your lead dry, you can pull it off and put a new line on there, or you can wipe it off with a paper towel or a baby wipe. But if I did a thin, so she's saying she did a line that was too thin, or maybe it thinned out because of the pressure. I think so. Yes, yeah. I would go right over that thin area let the lead touch down on the original line, and then I would do a line right on top of that because that will get that consistency right back to, to the same. I hope that answered the question. Um, somebody said, what is the toxicity? Oh, I hate lab questions, everybody. Um, everything that we make is um, water-based and non-toxic. So this you would clean up with soap and water and it's all made in the USA and it is non-toxic. So there it's you go. safe. 
Okay. So for those of you that are doing your lead, just complete your pattern. And the best tip that I can give you is do not touch the tip to your surface. Do not drag the tip along the glass, hover over your project and let your lead fall onto your pattern. I hope you guys can see that. Um, we have a, a good question. Where can I purchase glass for such work? Oh, well, you know, my favorite place to get glass um, is Michael's, but not like, don't go buy just glass. Cause then you have to go into the framing section and they have to cut it for you. And it's for me, it's kind of dangerous to handle and get in, out, in and out of my car. I just buy a frame. One, you can use the frame for another project or you can frame your gallery glass project. Even if at Michael's, it's not labeled as a floating frame, you know, where it doesn't have a back, any frame will work, just take the back off and you'll only use the glass in your project. So really all of the projects that we do, we just use glass out of a frame. That is a great question. All right, so I'm just gonna lead this butterfly and then I'm gonna walk you guys for the people that didn't lead before the class. I'm gonna walk you through how to lay out and use all of the free downloadable patterns. Yeah. And the lead is something a lot of people practice for a minute with the lead. Just because hovering above the glass, you do have to take a minute to kind of get used to that because I can't think of any other product that you allow it to just fall onto your project. Um, so it is a little bit of a practice, but once you get it, there are so many great ways to apply a pattern. You can use fabric, you can use scrapbook paper, you can download thousands of different um, patterns from so many different ways. Plaid, we just recently, um, added to our downloadables, Christmas, fall, Halloween, animals. So just so many options, but there's a pattern that's leaded. I just want you guys to see how thick and um, consistent the lead lines are when you just follow that tip by hovering above your project. All right, so the big butterfly's done. I'm just gonna take him off and you guys keep that. That's something you can use over and over and over again. Okay, so a couple of questions on different surfaces you can use gallery glass. Okay. Can Lo you use gallery glass on a mirror? Love it. And can you use gallery glass on Christmas ornaments? Love all these questions. On glass Christmas ornaments. So yes, yes, and yes. So gallery glass works obviously perfect on glass. Yes, you can absolutely use it on a mirror. It's a really unique look. I wish I had a project here. I do not. Um, you know, it won't be transparent, obviously, because you won't, um, you, you don't get light coming through the mirror, but you'll see the mirror through it. So you'll still have reflection because it will all dry, um, translucent. So it's beautiful on glass. It also works fabulous on, on plastic, whether it is plastic that you purchased or plastic Christmas ornaments, or even recycled plastic, whether it be, um, old sheets of plexiglass. It works on all of that. The only thing I want you guys to know is gallery glass is permanent until you want to remove it. And on glass, it's completely removable. Um, on plexiglass over time, it's permanent. So just know when you're doing it on a glass frame, I could peel this off. Actually, I'll show you guys because it's kind of magical. Um, frame it, use it, set it in my kitchen window, have it for years and then decide Oh, I don't like butterflies anymore, which that sounded horrible. <laughs> I will always like butterflies, but maybe you did something Christmas or seasonal. You guys, gallery glass is permanent until you take a little razor blade or a tool and you start the edge and then you can peel it off. I don't want to peel it off and ruin my entire project, but look, can you guys see that? you can peel it completely off of a glass surface and you could do a different design or you could start over. 
So one of the greatest things in the world about gallery glass is that, that it is permanent until you want to remove it. So one of the greatest all-time things about gallery glass, and let's see if you guys can see it behind me. You can't see it very well, but that is an old window that we found at a flea market. Gallery glass can be done vertical or horizontal. And look at that window. So we just found it at the flea market. It's just plain glass panes. We did that pattern, which you could do in your front door. You could do it in side lights. You could do it in a window um, above your kitchen sink and get that authentic gallery glass or stained glass look. So it can be done vertically. It can be done horizontally. Um, and if you do it in a window in your home, it can be completely removed after years, um, whether you're moving or you just want to refresh and do a different design. Yeah, so I'm, gallery glass is really unique. I was going to say, Sorry, if Steve. you're working, you're fine. If you're working on a mirror or if you want to put something on a mirror, um, I would do what Kirsten did and make it a clean. So draw it out, fill it in, let it dry on like a sheet of glass, like Kirsten has in front of her and then peel it up and then put yep. it on your mirror afterwards and that will be easier than trying to draw it on your mirror absolutely sure. so steven steven's so good thank gosh she's here because i'll just i'll go in crazy directions steven is exactly right cleans so gallery glass can be done vertically or horizontally and for that i mean the paint so you're letting you either want to make lead strips with notebook paper hundreds of those and then once they're dry apply them to your pattern and then color it in um, or you do want to do it on a scrap piece of glass. So you would do this butterfly just like this, let it dry, color it in, and then you would peel up your butterfly. You wouldn't do the background. And it's a giant sticker that then you apply to your mirror. That is a, gr is a great way somebody, to do. Somebody asked when you remove it, can you glue it to another place? You can, but I don't know that you would need to. Yeah, you um, don't, you know what do I have? I mean, because like you. if you if you were to glue it down, it would be glued after that, and you wouldn't be able to remove it as easily if you sure. want to change it again. Um, so yeah. So you guys, when you do a cling, you don't need to glue it. Um, let's see. I hate to I hate to do this, but I'm going to. So when you do a cling, so pretend like this did not have that clear background, and it was just the sunflower. So if I did just the sunflower or just the butterfly on a piece of glass, don't tell anyone, I just tore that apart. Okay, so I'm gonna take that away so you guys can see it. So pretend like I leaded this sunflower, just like we did the butterfly, let that dry. Then I filled it in with color and I let it dry. Again, just like we're doing in today's class. Once that is totally dry and I mean, it's on my glass, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, hold it up just so they know like it's- oh. So there is my dried, my dried design. Can you guys see? Oh yeah, that's yeah, not okay, going not anywhere. That sucker is on there. And you yeah. can see I barely did anything. It's almost like a sticker. Once that's on there, you just start the corner. You peel that off just like a fruit roll up. Someone said that once. <laughs> that is the best way to describe it. You can move it, it's flexible. You obviously don't wanna stretch it or lay it upon itself because then it will stick. You don't need glue. You simply put it on clean, dry glass or mirror. You press it down and you guys, that sucker is on there. Like, like it's, it's not going anywhere and it's not going on, it's not going anywhere ever. And then once it's on there, the background or the clear or whatever else you do to fill in the open space, you would do horizontal or vertical. And if you did this for Christmas, say you just did snowflakes and you didn't want to fill in the background, you wanted to do it on your front door. You put your snowflake, you take your snowflake off, you put your snowflake on. You can move it, your kids can move it around the window. They can do their, their bedroom window. It sticks over and over and over again. Of course, you don't want to get it dusty or store it on the floor. But if you keep the back clean and dust free, you guys, it will stick over and over like a giant sticker. That's kind of satisfying. <laughs> okay, I hope that answered everybody's question. Yeah, I think so. Ignore that little blob. I'll clean that up later. We were giving you guys all these great tips and I stuck my 
I stuck my glass in there. Okay, so for those of you that are still letting, keep letting while I'm talking. I just wanna show you guys how to be really flexible with the patterns. So I'm not gonna use all of these elements. I'm simply gonna place the flower. Maybe I want him that high, maybe I want him a little lower. I'm only gonna use the flowers and the leaves. So place your pattern where you want it and then do exactly what we did. While we're letting, Kirsten, I don't wanna interrupt you, but I this is a relevant question. So okay. somebody asked, um, let me scroll back up to it. Um, is it okay to do the letting at two separate sittings if you don't have a time to do it all at once? Like if you're working on that same pattern and you got up to the point where you are now, could you come back and do it or would it come out better if you were able to do it all in one go? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. No, you could do it in two, three, four, one, however many sittings that you need. You would just start exactly where you left off. If you're attaching wet lead to dry lead, once the whole project is dry, you will never know where you start or stop. So absolutely, there's no reason not to. Great question. All right, I'm just gonna do a few leaves. Again, I hope anyone that was letting their entire project kept going. So I'm gonna scoot, really look at these as elements. So I'm gonna scoot that down because my glass is bigger. I'm gonna attach where I've leaded to the rest of the pattern so that I can, ten, can continue that design to the bottom of my piece of glass. That way I wanna add two more leaves. So really the only tip I have in that is I want you guys to really look at the patterns as having so much more possibilities than what you see as, as what printed out. It doesn't have to be this exact flower with the dragonfly, the bee, and the butterfly. You can use just different elements. You can, you, you can make them longer. You can piece them together. There's so much potential when you're using these free downloadable patterns. I'm even gonna show you guys on this one. It's two full butterflies. And I am simply gonna use, you know what, I'm gonna put it up here just so you guys can see it. I'm gonna use, actually I like him better. This little wing matches the other one. I'm only gonna use half of the butterfly. So he's a full butterfly on the pattern. But if you guys just led his body, remember the tip, don't let the lead drag, or the tip of the lead drag on your glass surface, hover just a little bit, an eighth, a fourth, and let the lead fall onto your pattern. But when you're using these patterns, just use the parts that you like or that you need to fill your design space. So I'm just gonna do half of this little guy. and just make sure that all of your lead lines touch. You don't want any openings. And then I'm just gonna freehand his little antennas. So see when I move that pattern out from there, I only did half of the butterfly. So with these patterns, there's so much possibility. You can enlarge them, you can reduce them, you can do whatever you want with those, print them over and over. So will sun exposure or rain affect gallery glass if I use it on my front door? So such a good question. I'm glad you asked that because I went nuts about doing your front door. You want to do all of your gallery glass on the inside of your glass. So it is not weatherproof and it is not um, water resistant. So all so that window, um, you do it on the on the inside on the inside part. So you would apply your pattern on the outside. Don't do it on a rainy day. Um, your paper pattern or, your, or whatever you're following to color in, but do all of your application on the inside of your window. So whether it be a door um, or side lights, you do that on the inside. Okay, so you guys, I know this is not exactly what our project is, but I wanna move to the coloring because we've got so many tips and techniques on that. So here's where I hope it, well, 
I hope it is okay. But for those of you that led it with us today, no matter what, do not add color to wet lead lines. You want to let your lead dry completely. And we always say, we always say overnight just because humidity and weather and temperature is a factor, but it's usually dry sooner than that. But we want you guys to know, always, always, always add color once your lead is completely dry. All right. So any other lead questions? Because I'm going to move on to color. I think we're good. All righty. So leading is step one and step two is color. And color is super easy. Lots of fun things that you can do. I'm going to scoop that off just a little. Okay. So to color, the basics of coloring, I'll actually show you guys with this violet. The basics to coloring is a smooth, even application. So when you apply your color, what I like to do is put the tip of the bottle against the lead line area that I'm coloring and just kind of start filling in on the outside edge of the section that I'm coloring. Can you guys see that? Probably not. So I'm going along the outside edge and the lead being dimensional allows you to just bump right up against it. And then I am just gonna scribble and flood that area. And when I say flood, I don't mean so much that it pours out over the lead lines, but the main thing you wanna do is make sure you don't have any open areas where the paint does not touch the lead. I'm gonna do it down here, holding it up. Let's see if I can. So I touch the tip and I'm just bumping up against that lead in the section that I want that color. And you guys, the great thing is you don't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that there's no openings where the paint and the lead are not touching. And then you just scribble, getting full coverage, but not too much. And then basic gallery glass application is you want smooth glass. So taking a toothpick, you just wanna comb back and forth bumping between your lead lines and that just smooths down any texture in your paint application. And when it dries, it's beautiful, smooth colored stained glass. So that's the 101 of applying paint. Make sure there's no openings where there's glass coming through. Just apply it, not too much, but enough to give you full coverage and then just comb it one time, which removes any air bubbles, flattens out any bumps, and it will dry a really beautiful, smooth texture. Okay, here's a great question, Kirsten. How can you fix things if some of the color overflows onto the lead? Oh, I love this question. This makes me so happy, only because I have the best answer. It's nothing I did. It's the product. So the lead is opaque, dark black opaque. All of the colors are transparent. So you guys look at this project. Do you see any, I hope no one says yes. Do you see any paint on my lead? No, all the lead lines are black and bold. Look, I see Steven, he's squatting real close to, this, to the monitor. I don't see any. You don't see any, do you Steven? All of them are black. The reason is the transparent paint over the black lead, it doesn't matter. You do not have to go in there and clean it up. You do not have to use a Q-tip and get the paint off of your lead lines. You actually want paint on your lead lines. Let's see if I can actually see where you guys can see it. Probably not. Maybe, maybe a tiny bit. There is green paint on that lead line. There is a yellow paint on that lead line. There is probably a little bit of purple paint on that lead line, but because it dries translucent, it doesn't matter. Oh, isn't that the best answer? So get let get paint on your lead lines. Do not worry. That is one of the reasons why gallery glass is great for kids, for beginners, for giant home decor projects, why it's vertical and horizontal, because you don't have to 
you don't have to be that careful. And especially when you're making a clean, what we were talking about where you peel it on and off the glass, you don't wanna have any areas where the paint and the lead do not touch completely. Because if you do, your cling will not come, up, come off your glass in one piece. You wanna have a solid sheet where the lead and the paint dry together. So 101 is applying your color, making sure there's no open spaces and combing it with a toothpick. Now you guys apply the colors wherever, wherever you want in your butterfly. You don't have to do exactly what I do. So see what I do, I go, I kind of outline, I let the, lead, the bottle touch the lead and that's just to connect the paint and the lead to make sure there's no gaps. And then I just lightly squeeze the paint and scribble, filling in that area with a good solid coat, but not pouring out of those dimensional lead lines. And then I just comb it with a toothpick. And that does two things. It flattens out the paint so that when it dries, it's that really smooth colored glass look eliminates any air bubbles and just make sure that all those little nooks and crannies, the lead is touching or the paint is touching the lead. So I'm gonna do his little body. So that's applying one color. And you always wanna comb when it's wet. Don't color in so many areas and then come back and comb them because if that very top layer of your paint starts to dry, combing it will mess it up. So I apply the paint to that section and then comb it. Apply to that paint or that section and then comb it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the same exact technique, but maybe a lighter color will look a little bit different because you'll see, it, you'll see the lead differently. So using the bottle tip, I'm just kind of outlining and squeezing paint against the lead the lead line first. And then I'm just scribbling the paint in, filling it, but not overflowing it. And then taking a toothpick and just combing it one time. Popping any air bubbles. But see how there's some pink? You can see it right there. Oh, that's perfect. See how there's some pink paint on my lead lines right there? And you would think, oh, that's driving me nuts because it's opaque while it's wet, but when it dries, you will never, ever, ever see that. See the difference, you guys? And I'm using, oh, this is gonna be tricky for me. I'm using, these are the same colors. So it's opaque when it's wet and it is translucent when it is dry. I'm probably talking way too much. Let me get crafted. Okay, this is the rosy pink and do the same thing, just one color. Whenever you're applying one color, you guys, it's the exact same technique. Touch against your lead and then fill with color and then comb in just really one direction, bumping back and forth between your lead, your lead lines. Alrighty, so now I want to show you guys how to blend colors. So you can blend two colors, three colors, whatever you wanna do. To blend colors, you simply, so I'm gonna pick amber and rosy pink for this. So you guys, I am gonna do the same technique, bumping up against my lead, and I'm gonna fill just the bottom of this lead section with rosy pink. I'm actually gonna do all three of these little sections, but I'm only gonna fill half of that section. And then I'm gonna get my second color, that's amber. And I'm gonna do the same thing, go around the lead, the lead lines, scribble the color and let the paint meet 
So apply the paint just like if it was one color. So everything is filled with color, but I have that harsh line. So then to get rid of that harsh line, I simply take the toothpick and I just comb back and forth where the two colors meet until it blends like I want to. And you guys, anyone that is familiar with traditional stained glass, you know the colors are so vibrant and where two colors come together is really irregular and almost modern like that. So you can comb less or more depending on how dramatic you want those two colors to blend together. Like that, I'm gonna kind of leave a little bit more um, of a bold blend, but you can see when that dries, here again, I wanna show you guys, same colors dried, that's how beautiful those colors will blend together, the pink and the amber. Here, the pink and the purple, let's see if you guys can see that. The pink and the purple are blended together. So there's so many fun ways that you guys can blend different colors using the gallery glass. I'm gonna blend just a little bit of the purple. Look, I'm just gonna do at the very tip of each of those sections. Kirsten, when you're done with that, can you hold it up close just so we can get the close up of it? Absolutely. Now I'm gonna add pink everywhere else, doing the edges first and then filling with color. And the fun thing you guys, so know this, if you did this project and when it dried, it wasn't exactly what you wanted. Remember, you can peel it off and start over and not need to buy another piece of glass. And then I'm just using that toothpick to comb and blend those two colors together. All right, here we go, Stephen. Oh, okay, let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can see where the amber and the pink blended, solid areas, and then blending those two colors. It's really so much fun. Something that's really fun is to lead your design and then hand it over to kids. They love to color in dried lead lines. It's so much fun. I'm gonna show you guys, keep coloring. I'm gonna show you guys how I blend two different shades of green, but really the exact same technique. I'm gonna fill just the bottom of all of my leaves with the Kelly green, which is the darker of the two greens that we picked today. I'm actually gonna do all three of these leaves. Outline first with paint, touching up to your lead, and then scribble and fill it in. This is lime green, which is just a, a lighter shade of green. But you can see I've got a hard line, hard line where the two colors met. I'm just gonna use this toothpick. Always comb the solid color, just like we did when you're only using one color, because that just flattens out your paint. But then comb to blend where the two colors meet. So I'm gonna comb the dark green first or the Kelly green. Then I'm gonna sneak up here and comb the line and then comb where the two colors have come together. Beautiful, how to blend colors. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more color. I'm actually gonna show you guys the sunny yellow. Are you going to show the background? Um, oh, the clear. Yes, that is my favorite technique. And I will show you guys how to do that. 
And while you're doing that, I don't want to interrupt you. No, um, no. We had a question about mixing colors. So not what you did with the um, butterflies wings, but if you were to take like a red and a white and try to put the bottles together. Oh, pink, would that work? Yep. You can mix gallery glass. The only thing when you mix gallery glass is you want to use it, you know, use it right away. So a lot of times, let's see if I can do this. Like, so let's say I want a really, really, really soft pastel in this section of the butterfly wing. So I'm going to put the yellow, the sunny yellow in there. And then, or let's say I want a really, really, really soft peach. No, you know what? I'm back to soft yellow. Um, Michael's also carries white. I didn't use white in this. So you could use white, but you could also use the crystal clear. I am going to just kind of marbleize or zigzag some crystal clear in there with the yellow, still filling the areas. So can you guys see that? It's so hard to see. Let me hold that back up. Okay. So for the See how I just kind of blobbed in there, not overflowing it, but white or clear and yellow because I want to blend a softer yellow. Then I'm just going to comb it and comb it and comb it until it's blended into a lighter pastel yellow. So that's a fun way to blend colors, to use clear to make it a soft pastel color. Um, but you can definitely, whether you have an old empty bottle, that you have um, cleaned out with soap and water. You can mix two colors. You just wanna make sure that you only mix what you're gonna use because once it starts to dry, you know, you can't reactivate it and keep, and keep stirring it anymore. So a fun way is to do this and just keep combing until you get that light pastel color. But yes, they can totally be blended and mixed. So this, if you're blending on your pattern, I guess the only tip I would say is apply two colors, mix them together. You would just mix them over and over until you really don't have blending, but you've created a different color. I hope that helped. Okay, so you want to color in all of your design areas that are color first. So I'm just gonna, do a little bit more on this, but then I'm gonna stop and show you guys how to do the background. Okay, so my little butterfly's done. Most of the areas are done, but I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm just gonna comb these areas real quick. Okay, so crystal clear is personally my, all-time favorite technique for gallery glass. And it is, I noticed it showed better on this. It is this beveled glass, bumpy privacy um, effect that you see on so many gallery glass projects. This is smooth and combed with the toothpick like we did the butterfly, but then all of the background. You can do the technique I'm about to show you guys with any color. Um, I love it best with crystal clear. But you can see on our project today, I'm actually going to do both. I'm going to do the crystal clear technique on the top, but then I'm going to bring it in and do the ombre. Okay. So to do basic crystal clear, which is this, just filling in the background of any project that you do, you simply take the lid off the bottle. And the difference is you're not using as much paint and you're never combing it with a toothpick or a tool. So I'm gonna do this section. To do the crystal clear and get that beveled glass look, you are gonna just scribble. You're gonna squeeze very little paint because you actually want areas. Let me hold this up again. You want areas, oh, look at that scribble. You want areas where there's still glass. And the reason that you want that is because that's what gives you the texture. So don't forget it's opaque, but it will dry clear. I'm gonna weirdly leave my hand there because I think you guys will see it better. The only tip I have is don't go back and forth and create perfect lines. Don't go, you know, 
in rows so that you get a pattern. You don't want a pattern. You want a very irregular scribble. So you definitely want to bump up against your lead lines. What do I have that I could put? Oh, you know what? I bet if I put this under it, it's just enough color. Oh yeah, perfect. So you want to still bump up against your lead lines. You can do the outline first, but then you just want to scribble. Very irregular, not a ton of paint. You want to be okay with these little sections of glass that have no paint on them, because when that dries, that's what gives you that, that beveled, authentic texture look. So this technique is my favorite for really finishing. Um, any stained glass authentic project, all of the glass is textured. So if you did this beautiful butterfly and then you just left that clear glass, you wouldn't get the look of authentic stained glass. So you always, oops, I fell in the green. That's okay, clean it on a paper towel. You just want to completely fill in your background area with a scribble pattern and that will dry clear and give you that beautiful beveled glass look. So that- So did you do the same with the blue at the bottom? Yep, and so to ombre the blue at the bottom, all you guys wanna do, and remember work in sections. So I'm gonna work just in this section because you don't want, you don't wanna do the blue on everything. And then when you start um, combining it with the clear, it be dry at all. So just in this section, I'm gonna apply the darkest blue, which is turquoise, doing that same scribble pattern from the bottom of the glass, maybe just an inch or an inch and a half up. When you're doing this swirl pattern with a color, you do want to fill in your areas a little bit more, but you don't want it, you're doing the same technique. You don't want to comb them. You want to keep that really irregular, bumpy pattern. Then I'm going to go to aqua, which is a lighter version. And I'm going to blend those colors together, but just with the tip of my bottle. See how I'm allowing the tip of the bottle to kind of separate that line between the two colors. So I'm do, still doing that same technique that we normally do with the clear, but have fun and do creative things because it also works perfect with color. So see how those two colors, there's not a hard line. They kind of blend together, which will dry like beautiful stained glass. And then I'm gonna jump up to this section and I'm gonna do the aqua, no more of the dark teal but still that random scribble swirl pattern. And then I'm gonna to go to my clear and I'm gonna soften that line where the two meet, allowing them to swirl together and then work my way up in each section so that it's just clear eventually. And I'll just finish this section and then I'll hold it up so that you guys can see. Can you guys see that? So it creates a really nice ombre look. And remember when it dries, it dries totally different. Um, it dries to be that beautiful translucent color. So all the colors I'm using are the same that dry that when they dry, they look totally different. So you guys, those are the techniques of gallery glass, using the patterns in the lead to create, um, or using the lead and any pattern to create a beautiful pattern, letting your lead dry completely, and then color. And color is so fun and easy. You can do one color, you can blend, you can do that textured, um, almost scribble effect that gives you kind of a beveled glass look. And then once that is dry, you guys have a beautiful, authentic looking stained glass project 
that then you would go back in, you could reapply the edges of your frame. You could actually leave it just plain glass, but you've got a beautiful stained glass project that you can hang in a window. Um, you could give as a gift. There's so much that you guys can do. So Stephen, do we have any last, last questions? Um, yeah, one last minute question. Uh, what would you use to hang something like that? Um, well, you know what? So Michael's has on this particular one, we were just gonna set it on a really cute, um, what are, I guess plate stand, those little easels and put that on a shelf. Um, gosh, I'm sure there's so many different ways to hang glass. I bet command strips has something. I'm not sure because we were gonna use this um, again to put on a shelf, but I do know at Michael's, they have tons of floating frames that actually have a chain or a hanger attached. So that would be a great way to hang your project. Awesome, thank you so much. Any other, any other questions? Um, air bubbles, how would you get rid of those? So air bubbles are, you're gonna have some air bubbles. We have the designer of this product line says that air bubbles are the essence of gallery glass because if you go into any beautiful building with authentic stained glass to create the colors, you get bubbles in your glass. So some air bubbles are actually beautiful, but all of them while your paint is wet, you can pop them. You can pop them with a toothpick. You can pop them with a straight pin. Um, you can also, but be very careful. It works perfect on plastic, but on glass, you just have to be really, really careful. If you have our toolkit, which I do, but can't find. If you have our toolkit, you can tap the back of the glass while the paint is wet underneath the bubbles and a lot of them will pop. But I like to pop them with a toothpick or a straight pin. Cool. Okay, any other questions? Um, yeah, so we probably have time for one more question. How would you yep. clean gallery glass? So gallery glass, once it's really, really dry and not just overnight dry, give it a good, give it a good, at least 48 hours, but you can use um, a lint-free rag and just get it very damp and just lightly dust it and it, it will be perfect. And um, any moisture that gets on there will dry within an hour, but that's the best way to clean dust um, very carefully off the gallery glass piece. Yeah, if you guys have additional questions, we would suggest go to pladonline.com slash gallery glass. Yep, and don't forget, we've got the Getting Started Guide, which answers so many great, so many questions that you guys would have. And post your projects on plaid or hashtag plaid crafts, hashtag make it with Michaels. We love to see what you guys created. So thanks for joining us and enjoy gallery glass. Bye. Bye, guys.